This tutorial will show you how to make a Git flow diagram, which is a diagram that visualizes how a group of developers or several teams of developers will organize their work on product releases. The term Git flow comes from the combination of the words Git and workflow and refers to this common branching model of organizing work across a main branch, a development branch, feature branches, and a hotfix and release branches. It's important to note that Git does not keep track of branching as you work, so being able to describe your branching strategy with a diagram is really useful when it comes to keeping your teams of developers aligned. By making sure everyone is on the same page and your work is organized correctly, you can minimize merge conflicts in your code and work more effectively. This is an example of a Git flow diagram that I made in Gliffy. It includes two feature branches, but the number that you include here will depend on the work your team is doing during a certain sprint or during the period of time that you're diagramming. So let's get started making our own Git flow diagram from scratch so you can see how easy it is to capture your idea in Gliffy. If you've never used Gliffy before, you can get started by just going to go.gliffy.com. I'm already in the editor, so I'm going to go to File, New. From here, I'm just going to select a basic diagram. All we're doing is drawing some lines, and this preloads in the basic shapes that you'll need to make that diagram. We're going to start by drawing the master branch along the top of our editor canvas here using the line tool. Click and drag it out. I have snap to grid on, which is right here, so that helps keep my diagram nice and neat. And I'll click on the line, and then I'm just going to type to name this master branch. I can edit the line properties right here to give it the style of a dashed line as well. And then I can double click on the name to drag this along the placement on the line. So I'm going to put it over here just to keep it out of the way. Then I can drag and drop out a circle. And this is going to be the zero for my product. Resize it. And it, you can change settings here. You can um, position the text to be immediately above your shape if you'd like, or keep it inside your shape. For this one, I'm going to do inside. You can also change the color of the text. You can change the fill of the shape and the stroke on that shape as well. So I'm going to do no stroke and make this light blue. And that will go right here because this is our starting point. There we go. Now I'm going to go ahead and draw my additional branches. You can keep using the line tool up here, but I'm going to click on this one and use control or command D to duplicate it, move it down like so, and then I can use Command D to replicate it and keep that spacing nice and even, which helps make it look really nice. Then you just click and type to edit these titles. So this will be our hotfix. This will be our release branch. This will be our development branch. And this will be our feature branch. Then reminder, you can click to drag this type along that line as well. Teams may choose to label or order these differently, but I like to put the hotfix and then the release branch above the development branch and then any features that fall beneath it to show that they're going to need to merge up to the development branch before they can be released. Now, along each of these branches, you can drag and drop more circles, or you can use, again, that command D to duplicate function. And I'm going to bring a circle down here to the development branch. I'm going to change the styling along this branch. So let's have this be a light green and remove the text here. Now from that development branch, people are going to be working on new features. So those will fall here approximately, and then need to merge back up to that development branch. Maybe we are going to schedule something for a release and bring it up here again. And I can use our eyedropper tool to reapply that same style along this branch. And then again, we'll pull 
down here. Work on some features. Back up. And we can extend all of these really easily by clicking and holding shift to select them and then dragging them out like this. I'll get that guy out of the way and then we'll do one more up here. And obviously this is optimistically planning that we won't have to do any hot fixes here. So now that we've added in some of how we're thinking about getting this work done, we can use the connector tool to hover over one of our circles and a, this green circle will appear that's telling you that you're at an anchor point and then connect it down to the next one. And I want to style this line as a solid arrow so that it shows up against that other one. So I changed the style here back to solid and I'm going to apply an arrowhead here. Ooh, we need to give this a little breathing room it looks like. So let's close out of that and switch to our pointer tool and move that guy over. So then you can see a little bit more clearly we've got that black arrow. I can also change where it is angled by dragging and dropping this middle point. Let's make that arrow stand out a little bit more by again selecting our branch lines and maybe we'll make these a gray color. There we go. Now I think these shapes are kind of muted, so I'm going to select all these once more and give those a darker color green. Great. Now that I've set up my arrow how I'd like, I can continue throughout my diagram. And I'm just going to quickly draw these and then I'll go in and adjust them in just a moment. Now we'll give everything some breathing room. And you can see how these arrows automatically adjust as we move things down. All right, I'm going to correct where I've labeled some of these things so that they're out of the way. We can name these versions for the product. And then the one other thing to be mindful of is work can happen on the development branch while work is also happening on a feature branch. So I'm going to add these arrows as well. Great. Now, if you want to add any notes or details, say, about this merge or how you need to schedule this release, you can select a shape and then use this tool right here to add a pop-up note. So this is where you might be able to uh, type in any details like be sure to schedule before QA lead is out of office. Then you can see that that note is applied here. So when you save and publish this diagram, people can hover over and see that detail. Or you can just add a text box anywhere in your diagram that you'd like to say feature description. Maybe you want to reference a specific ticket number or um, provide a little bit of extra detail on what the team needs to be prioritizing. And that's all it takes. So when you're done, you can save your work. I'm going to go ahead and save it here. And that's everything you need to know. One idea though, it is a good idea to sketch this out and share your diagram with your development team for feedback to make sure that everyone's aligned on how you're going to handle the work that's assigned during your next sprint. With Gliffy, you can add automatically updated links by using this share button up here and then selecting embed. This is great because if you make a change here, it will automatically update the diagram in the link that you've shared too. So no one's going to accidentally reference an outdated version of your work.
If you haven't yet, be sure to sign up for a free trial of Glippy via the link in this video description, or check out more of our tutorial videos. We have tons of tools for software developers and engineers to visualize and organize their work and ideas. You'll be a diagramming pro in no time.